Hello and welcome. I'm Michael, Director of Customer Operations here at Liquid Space, and over the next few minutes, I'll be talking you through part one of this video series. Here at Liquid Space, each venue has a unique profile page on our marketplace. This profile outlines your venue's location, amenities, workspaces, and ratings that guests leave after using your space. We find that the profiles with the most pop garner the most attention, so proper setup is really important. In this video, we'll go through the process together. Then in the next, I'll show you how to add spaces and go live on Liquid Space. So to start, visit liquidspace.com and click on List Space. We'll fill in some information here that will shape the basis for your venue and then get into some detail work a little later. Okay, enter the address of your venue here, then click Start for free. If you're new to Liquid Space, you'll be prompted to join and create a free account, but since I already have one, I'll just sign in. All right, we're now prompted to start by completing five steps of setup to create the basic venue profile framework. In step one, read over these descriptions and choose the type of venue that suits your building best. I'm going to choose office building. In step two, add a profile picture and input your phone number. Now regarding your phone number, keep in mind that after a guest makes a booking, they'll be provided with contact information to reach out to your team with questions, for help when arriving, or during a reservation, so make sure the phone number provided is staff during your operating hours. Step 3. Upload your company logo, name your venue, and add some interesting details about your building. Now your building name will be your brand and location identity throughout the Liquid Space site and for your online profile with us. This should be your business name, building name, or other identifying business reference. Add some details about your building and your space here. I have something loaded into the clipboard already, simply explaining where we're located and what's nearby and how excited we are to host. Step 4. Confirm your location, add a suite or unit number if applicable. And in step five, use this slide to create placeholders for your hourly and or monthly spaces. So I know that on the hourly side, I'd like to list a meeting room with a capacity of six people. On the monthly side, I'd like to offer an office with a single capacity and a half dozen open desks. You can always add or update spaces later, but it's best to put in all your spaces here so we have placeholders to work from later on. Next, we're dropped into the Venue Management section. Click on the Venue Setup option in the left-hand sidebar. We'll be doing the rest of the work for this video on the page that follows. You'll notice right away that everything from the five-step setup is entered automatically. And first, we're just going to double-check that your pin on Google Maps had landed in the right place and is displaying the correct street view. Guests will eventually use this to find your space, so make it perfect. Now, as you can see, we have our happy guest here standing on East Bayshore Road. And Google has already dropped the pin automatically here. I can drag and drop it anywhere I like. Checking the street view, though, this looks right, so I'm going to leave it. Now, optionally, you can enter a Twitter handle. We'll use this to add recent tweets to your profile page and make it easier for guests to tag you if they tweet about your spaces. About your company is a space to adjust the description that we added earlier. And in case you didn't have it handy while completing the setup steps, add your company logo here. These make your listings look more professional and appealing, so we highly recommend you do so. Moving further down the page, we'll now get into payment info setup. As you may already know, Liquid Space takes care of processing all guest reservation payments for you, and we automatically send payment to you on the 15th of each month. Complete the form so we can send your payments to the right place and contact the right person in case of questions or issues. Payee name should be the business or individual's name to whom the check should be made, the tax ID should belong to the payee. Contact name, phone number, and email address should lead us to a person who we can contact with billing concerns or issues. This is also the contact who will receive monthly emails when statements are ready to be viewed. The address information here should be the billing address for your venue. If you're receiving payments from us via check, this is the address where your checks will be sent. Now in this optional part, you can add sales tax options. You can set tax percentage, add an additional fixed tax, and choose which total you'd like tax collected on. Tax fields are optional, and you are ultimately responsible for collecting and remitting sales tax for your venue. 
If you choose not to break out sales tax separately, you can leave these fields blank. If you're unsure of what to put in any tax field, please consult your tax advisor. Now we'll be setting up your team members for your host profile. The important parts here are defining roles and deciding who will be the primary host. To add a team member, click add a team member. You'll fill in their name and their email address and they'll receive an invite. They can upload a photo and add their mobile phone number. But then you'll need to decide whether they're a venue host or a calendar admin. Venue hosts have the same permissions as the account owner, while calendar admins are limited to only managing calendar and booking availability. Set up your notification preferences here and save when you're ready. Before you move on, check this primary host dropdown as the person you've chosen here will be the team member who's first point of contact for your guests. Moving into the welcome info section, here we'll set up messaging that's displayed to guests upon booking. In the custom greeting, enter a personal message for them. This message will be displayed on reservation pages, so take this opportunity to thank the guests for booking and provide instructions or introduce your team or your space. And in the next field, enter any special instructions for entry. For example, you use this field to ensure guests can easily find their way to their reserved space or tour by providing step-by-step -step instructions on how to get to your office from the street. If your building has security or there's special information about parking or how to gain access, outline those details in this field. It's now time to set your hours of operation and holiday schedule. Choose the hours you and your team are available to host liquid space guests using the options provided here. These should be the hours that you and your staff are on site and available to provide tours and greet guests. You can change the hours here, choose to be closed on a given day, and we also offer the option to be open for 24 hours a day. However, it's worth noting it's extremely rare that our venues are open and staffed 24 hours a day, so use your best judgment when choosing this option. For observed holidays, we by default enter in and activate all of the U.S. banking holidays. If you're outside the U.S., your local holidays will be displayed. You can also set up extended hours for your venue build members or indicate that one or more of your spaces will or will not be available for a period of time, such as a holiday that isn't listed above or a special event. Here in the advanced options, by clicking add an exception, you choose which day or date range whether you'll be open or closed and what hours, and then the workspaces affected and the type of guests that this exception applies to. Enter your description here and click save when you're ready. I don't have any exceptions, so I'm gonna leave it blank. I'm very happy with the observed holidays as they are. Next, you can set up a booking window to prevent guests from booking hourly space with too little notice or too much notice. This is completely up to you and depends mostly on how often you manage your calendar during your business hours, but you're able to set a minimum amount of notice in hours and a maximum amount of notice in days. Just like adding an exception, you're able to choose which hourly workspaces this setting will affect and which type of customer or which type of guest. Click save when you're ready and you can see how it looks there. At the bottom of this page, you'll find links to all of our terms and we recommend you become familiar with them. They're written to set some standard rules for conducting business and in general provide protection and guidance around what is and isn't acceptable. So that's it. Now you're ready to click save at the top of this page. Your venue is now configured and your next steps are to moving on to adding space details, which is the topic of our next video in this series. If you have any trouble getting through venue setup, please don't hesitate to reach out to our support team using the chat option here in the bottom right corner of our site. I thank you so much for watching and thank you for choosing Liquid Space. I'll see you in the next video.